Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a cylinder contribution test on a Ford Ranger, Ford Everest or Mazda BT50. Essentially what a cylinder contribution test is, is a test that shows you if you have a problem in any one of your cylinders. So that can be either low compression, a bad injector, a bad injector seat or anything that could be causing essentially a misfire in the actual engine itself. Now I'm going to be doing that using a program called Forescan as well as using a ELM327 adapter, which just plugs into the OBD2 port there. I do have a video already on this whole setup and how to connect it and where to get it from, so I might throw a link in that description right now. So once you've got Forescan all connected up to your car and everything's all good to go, so you wanna come over to this little side tap over here and click on this uh, wave format here that says read PIDs. And then we're coming down to this little cog right down the bottom here, clicking on that. And we're going to scroll down till we find cylinder balance test, which is right here. So we got, there we go, cylinder one, two, three, and four. We got the contribution test all there. And essentially what I'll be doing is just adding each cylinder one by one. So once I click on the cylinder, I then come over to this arrow here and just add it. So we got cylinder one, cylinder two added, cylinder three, and cylinder four. Once you've added all them, just click on the tick down the bottom here. And we're pretty much all good to go. Then what you wanna do is just click on the dashboard up here. And essentially how we're gonna read this cylinder contribution test is in a perfect world with a perfect engine, we would see 1.0 all across four cylinders or if you have a five cylinder, you'd see it across all five cylinders. Now, when I run this test, I'm not expecting to see that on this because I know that this car, this, this motor has done 350,000 kilometers and the injectors have done 150,000 kilometers. So they're pretty well worn. Um, but what I do hope to see is a difference of about 10%. So for example, if I see a 1.1 here and a 0 0.9 here, I'll be happy with that. Um, but if I see a 2.0 here and a 0 0.05 there, well then, you know, obviously I'll know that I'll have a major problem on my hands. Um, one important thing to note as well is you want to do this on a warm engine. I've just come back from a half an hour drive and my engine's pretty warmed up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fire it up. And when I fire it up, I'm going to come down here and click this little play button down here. And that'll give me a live feed. And we'll see what sort of results we'll get with this engine. So before you do start your car, you just want to come over and just make sure that this here is in the HS cam position. So, just starting it up now. And I'm gonna come down here and just press the play button. It's asking me if it's in the HS cam position. Yes, it is. And as you can see, we've now got a live feed of the cylinder contribution. So essentially just going over these figures, Cylinder number one, that's perfectly fine. Cylinder number two, that's fine as well, I'm happy with that. Uh, cylinder number three is a little bit low, but you know, 10% difference. I'm, I think that's pretty okay still for the amount of kilometers the car's got and the uh, age of the injectors. And cylinder number four, that's I'm perfectly fine with that. So as you can see here, cylinder number three is a little bit low for my liking, but with the kilometers on the car, with the age of the injectors, 150,000 Ks on the injectors, I'm happy with that. It's not gonna affect you know, the driving or anything like that of the car being at that figure. If this was like a 0 0.008 or something like that, well then I'd be a bit worried, but obviously if that was that low, the cylinder next to it would be a lot higher because it'd be contributing more to the running of the actual engine itself. So that's a wrap up for this video. Hopefully you've got something out of it. And if you have, hit that like button so other Ranger owners can find it and help them diagnose problems that they might encounter with their Ford Rangers. Till next time, see you later.